Alrighty, we are playing the $50 Rilsa Rail uh, kind of initiative blink deck, and unfortunately it looks like we have ourselves a mulligan. Only one color in this hand, no ramp, seems kind of sus, so we're going to take our free seven. <sighs> Alright, uh, well, looks like we might have our work cut out for us. No lands is also no good. Uh, so we're going to mulligan again, go to six. Okay, we're going to mulligan again, we're going to go to five. Well, maybe I should have kept that first hand, huh? No, I think it was right to take the first seven. I think people get too, too used to keeping just okay hands, hands that aren't, aren't in any position to accelerate you or really uh, set you up to actually win a game. Okay, this is actually keepable. We got enough lands, we got some ramp, we got card draw. This is actually pretty good. So we're going to keep this. We're going to put Fallen Shinobi back because it's not super necessary. And I'm actually going to put back the Yuan Team Allison. Um, we're not casting it on two. We have a, a ramp spell on two that we want to cast, so it's not really doing us anything until we deploy real sick, because we don't want to venture into the dungeon until we've already taken the initiative. So, all right, as far as five card hands go, this one's not that bad, but let's see what we're up against. So first up, we're up against Ravos, Soul Tender, and Cedar Kondo of Jamura. This is probably some form of tokens list, if I had to take a guess, just little guys that can get in and then buff them up. We're up against Edgar Markov. Uh, that's going to be a challenge, but... Okay, I guess, I guess again, a real, a real test for us here today. And then third and finally, we're up against Braids Arisen Nightmare. Okay, this commander is very, very strong, draws a lot of cards. It's just pretty much your basic run-of-the-mill aristocrats stuff. So this is an interesting pod. I think most definitely, uh, I am afraid primarily of the Edgar Markov player, though it does look like they took a mulligan of their own. So at the very least, they have maybe one less card to try and kill us with. So we'll see how this goes. The way our hand's panning out, it kind of looks like we're just going... I mean, it's pretty spelled out for us, right? Myriad Landscape on one, land on two, plus the Cold Steel Heart. And then after that, uh, if we don't draw another land, we might just straight up Myriad Landscape. And even if we do, we might just straight up Myriad Landscape. My thought process being, if we crack the Myriad Landscape on turn three, it'll put us at uh, four mana. And then on the following turn, if we have another land, five mana, and that's enough to cast Rilsa, which will then kind of start enough of a value engine that we can get a bit caught up. We did draw a board wipe this turn, which is really good. Uh, it means we're gonna possibly be able to deal with kind of the initial assault from the Edgar player, which is fantastic. We might get to kill Braids incidentally, which would also be good. And then I don't, again, I, I'm assuming this is some sort of like little creature token deck. And if we get to kill any of their stuff too, I'll be pretty pleased. Looks like the Edgar player had a pretty decent start. Okay. All right. Gems, gemstone Caverns. <laughs> oh, well, I spoke, I spoke too soon. Uh, gems, gemstone Caverns was probably not ideal considering it's a colorless land, but if they're going to use it to cast Skull Clamp, I am now suddenly again, much more afraid. This is going to solve that problem that they had with the mulligan, and they're just going to be able to kind of continually fuel themselves up, um, which is, again, in part why I'm, I am grateful that we did draw the Dead of Winter, but even so, this is still still less than ideal, one might say. At the very least, they're not casting anything else this turn, so one one more turn of reprieve. I'm trying to think of what our other options are for our future turns. Um, obviously, like, cracking the Mirai Landscape's best case scenario, but yeah, so like, now this, this is interesting too, right? Because the Mask of Memory is going to pair very, very well with the Shadow Mage Infiltrator. And so, again, I think it's going to depend heavily on what we draw next turn to kind of decide whether or not we we want to cast that or if we want to crack the Myriad Landscape. Because as it stands, if we don't draw another land, I am pretty interested in considering casting Shadow Mage Infiltrator just because it plus Mask of Memory is going to draw us a bunch of cards. Okay, so it looks like I was right. This does appear to be some kind of tokens deck. It does suck a lot that it would possibly die to the Dead of Winter. And I guess maybe depending on what these two do on their following turns, um, that might also influence whether or not we want to commit any creatures currently. Because yeah, this is... This is pretty scary, I'm not gonna lie. But if we draw a land and therefore can cast Rilsa on curve, like going Rilsa and then a board wipe is, is pretty good, especially because at that amount of mana, if we drew another land, we could then cast the Shadow Mage Infiltrator after the fact, which would help us steal back the initiative and rebuild a little bit. Or we could just cast the Mask of Memory if we don't, which kind of does the same thing, obviously not as immediately considering we wouldn't have a creature to attack with, but they're both potential options. The Markov player did find another colored mana source, so I guess that's good for them, bad for us us. Okay, that is bad. Cordial Vampire is a very scary card. Uh, whenever it or another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on each vampire you control. Now, typically, this on its own isn't so bad. Again, we have the Dead of Winter. However, given the fact that we're up against a Braids deck, which like I said, is probably just a pretty bog standard aristocrats list. I'm guessing, you know, things like Reassembling Skeleton, the like, they're, they're probably going to get at least a couple of counters over the course of this game if it were to stick. And that 
that's not even considering the fact that they also have skull clamp on board, right? And they obviously want to keep skull clamping because it keeps their hand full already. And then if they're also just getting to kill us in the process, obviously is, is pretty bad for us. Now, again, grateful I have the Dent of Win Dead of Winter. However, we're going to have to find a point to cast it where it's not too late. Because if we get to the point where this thing survives the Dead of Winter, then we're kind of screwed anyway. Uh, and I don't want to cast it this turn because we obviously would prefer to ramp ourselves or set up some card draw or whatever. So we're kind of in this weird spot where we need to find the exact right moment to wipe their board. Otherwise, it's going to become a massive, massive issue. Because if it lives or, or any of their board lives and we kill everybody else's stuff, they're, they're going to get a bunch of counters and be able to swing back and kill us anyway. Uh, this is just braids. Okay, I don't know if they're going to sack it. I guess they could sack the Drown Yard Temple because uh, they can technically get it back, but it seems pretty aggressively bad to do that. Trading a mana this early in the game, especially when they've shown us no more ramp to draw a couple of cards when they already have seven in hand. Seems like a mistake, but maybe they they really desperately want to dig for a removal spell or something. So, okay. And as I expected, they don't. All right. Good draw. Good draw. Good, good, good draw. We did draw a fourth or a third land. So this means we probably are just going to crack the Myriad landscape. And this would mean that the Dead of Winter would count for five on our uh, on our next turn because we do have the Cold Steel Heart. So that's really good. I am debating whether or not we want to grab a Black Source or a Blue Source. I'm thinking we want to grab, I think we want to grab a Black Source. Even though we have a double blue spell in hand, um, we do want to be able to cast, potentially cast Dead of Winter and Shadow Mage Infiltrator if we were to draw another land next turn and therefore even if it was a blue source like if we get two blue sources then we draw another blue source we have five blue mana and one black mana we can't do that obviously so this kind of hedges our bets plus when we cast Rilsa eventually and we take the initiative we'll be able to get that next that other blue source that we kind of so desperately want and need I still really don't want a wrath next turn if at all possible but it's looking ever and ever more like we're going to have to it would it, it is nice that it would set the braids player back too it is nice that it would set the the vampire player back a little bit, but I, I'm so scared that they're just going to draw into ramp and kind of explode that I am, I am nervous that if we don't do it next turn, we're kind of in, kind of in really bad shape, but man, it sucks to have to board wipe on turn, you know, turn three or turn four or whatever, right? That's always never how you want to be spending the early turns. We do get attack for two here. It makes sense. We're the only open player. They do cast ashes of the aberrant. So whenever a creature dies, they gain a life. Now that's not really of much concern to us. We're not a graveyard deck, so that's okay. It will shut down the braids player funny enough a little bit because uh, their drown yard temple will now be turned off and if they have anything like i said earlier like a reassembling skeleton or the like they won't be able to to kind of get it back i'm assuming this is mostly here to gain life which is kind of weird maybe there's some sort of aristocrats deck too i guess they do have ravos so maybe that makes sense and that can kind of get a creature back every turn but at the same time wait okay they can still be targets of abilities that's what i was checking because i was a little confused i thought maybe it did synergize with ravos and i was a little bit a little bit questioning the inclusion but looks like everything's good. Vampire player does find another land. They now have all their colors. Okay, they cast a lord. So now I'm almost certain that I'm going to have to... Well, funny, funny enough, this is actually bad with the skull clamp because giving it plus one plus one means they won't die when they equip but in any case it does probably mean i have to dead of winter this this coming turn a lord a second card that's gonna pump their board and even just some little dorks like that's probably just good enough to eat a wrath i do now really really want to draw a a fifth land whereas last turn or a fourth land i guess technically whereas last turn it was maybe a little bit okay if we didn't because we could potentially cast the rilsa but this is kind of worst case scenario i was kind of hoping they would spend this turn developing something a little less substantive maybe i don't know like a card draw engine other than skull clamp or something of that nature but yeah this kind of prices us into having to wrath because if we don't and though and now the problem is right it's the same problem as before but just exemplified if the lord lives before or gets so big before we can wrath then we're screwed because it's going to keep pumping the team after the fact and doesn't really solve the problem so yeah we're in a, a little bit of a of a pickle here and we're we're very much now incentivized to try just try and nuke the board if we don't draw a land we'll probably just cast the mask of memory it does kind of suck, but either way, the good news is we can still cast Rilsa. So like Wrath into Rilsa the following turn isn't super bad. It sets up the initiative. If they don't have a super big board state, probably means they're not seizing it back from us at least immediately. So it has some, some amount of safety. I am just hoping that the Braids player doesn't become super, super greedy and sack off a creature or something to draw a couple cards when they really don't need to just so they 
can essentially buff the Edgar player's board. Okay, Cabal Coffers is kind of funny. They only have two swamps. Uh, they play a Mox Amber though, so that kind of compensates, gets them a little bit ahead on mana. Okay, Trooper Cobber's not bad. I hope they kill the Cordial Vampire and not the Lord. Oh, that's not the right choice. Yeah, that was bad. Because now I'm scared they're going to sack the Trooper Cobra. And if they do that, we're kind of up the creek. I guess it depends. It depends on whether or not the Ravo Sadar. Yeah, they do. Shoot. That's really bad. Now it depends on if the Sadar player decides to sack and if the Edgar player decides to sack. Because if they do that, the Cordial Vampire is going to get too big. And this is what I was afraid of. And I was crossing my fingers that the Braids player wouldn't do. But lo and behold, yeah, this is so bad. So now, now we need to draw a. Not only do we need to draw land. Shit. Yep. We needed to draw a snow land. Yeah, I mean, this is just terrible now. Like, we can't kill anything. It's going to keep growing. Unless the Braids player can get back the Chupacabra, we're kind of just, like I said, up the creek. I think we have to cast Rilsa. I think we have to get another land now to try and even just stay in this game. Again, I am praying that what this actually means is that they have either a way to get back the Rapid Chupacabra, which would make some amount of sense considering, you know, Aristocrats decks, they should have some amount of recursion. But that was definitely the wrong choice. They absolutely should have killed the Cordial Vampire. The Storm, the Storm Kirk captain can wait. That's not important. Having the Cordial Vampire at six power and then now a Death Touch Lifelinker also at six power is going to make it not only incredibly hard to pressure them down, but also incredibly hard to answer the board. I was I was sort of hoping they would sacrifice the Mox Amber instead. It would draw them basically the same amount of cards. It would draw them more cards, in fact. And yes, it would mean they were down a mana, but the partner's player casts Solemn Simulacrum, so that's probably going to get them their third color. They are short on black. Yep, no surprise there. Yeah, I was going to say they can't really attack us anymore. So obviously the only attack is to swing at the Markov player, you get their 1-1. One, one. And now the thing that sucks too is like the other thing was the Stromkirk captain, captain was stopping the Skull Clamp from becoming a problem, but now the Edgar tokens aren't big enough to, to not die to the Skull Clamp. So like it's so bad on so many different levels to kill the, the captain instead of the Cordial Vampire there, especially as the player who's intending to sacrifice more creatures later in the game. Why would you give your opponent a card that essentially counters your deck, right? It's just a weird play. Um, on our turn, it, it's tough to say kind of now. So if the, if the vampires get much bigger, we still can't wrath them, but we might be able to equip Mask of Memory, swing and draw a couple cards, um, etc. That might help us find our seventh snow source, which would buff the dead of winter and maybe get us to critical mass but we'll see the other option is we could just cast some if we drew a land we could cast like grim hireling plus shadow mage infiltrator if they get like I said if they do get too big one cool thing if the vampires stay exactly at six power which i'm super doubting they will but let's you know let's be optimistic if they do and we get to keep the initiative we can go to the forge put two counters on rilsa and then dead of winter and she'll be at seven toughness yeah see this is what i was hoping they would do last turn i was hoping they'd cast sore like something like this which doesn't immediately impact the creature side of their board state. Um, but now we're really screwed because they're going to either plus one and target the Cordial Vampire, which is going to make it bigger. Or I guess they could target the, the Life Link or two. That would be fine as well. Uh, but either way, something's now going to be out of range of our Wrath. Or they can activate the minus three and just sneak something into play. They are casting Cemetery Gatekeeper, Exile Card from a Graveyard. Okay. Yep. So this is just kind of a Punisher card. This on its own is not too concerning. Uh, and they are technically, at least right now, out of mana for Skull Clamp. So they can't activate that. But that begs the question what are they going to do with Soren right now it is really scary if they plus one Soren sack the one one and ping something because it's going to make these things just again absolutely gargantuan which is a problem I'm almost hoping instead they try and get cheeky and they just put a counter on something like maybe they give the cordial vampire death touch and lifelink give it a plus one plus one counter I am praying that's what they do or I guess maybe they don't activate it at all but that seems bad they're both plus one ability so there's no reason not to I guess this suggests they're probably going to do the sacrifice one because if they went to combat already, they wouldn't want to be giving something plus one plus one or death touch or lifelink. That doesn't make much sense because obviously they would want to attack with it. And I think they are obviously going to attack. Now, if they do attack us with Cordial Vampire, snap block no questions asked it costs us our commander but it also means that thing's not on the board anymore and maybe there's a chance that someday we get to wrath okay they do just decide to attack the tokens player i guess they're most likely to chump block which would mean they'll get more counters which also puts us in the same really terrible position i am hoping they just take the damage but i know they're not going to which is unfortunate we're in this really terrible pattern where my only wrath involves power toughness and they have a thing that keeps growing power and toughness so it's not like a normal 
Lord, which is just a static plus X plus X. It's a kind of snowballing one. Now, the good news is we didn't get attacked, which means we're very likely not going to lose the initiative this turn. And that means we could scry and try to find other outs. Kind of, I think our game plan now has to be, we just have to race them. We just have to present something even more powerful than, you know, extra tokens and counters every single turn, which seems impossible, but I don't, I don't really know what else our, our play could be here. We're kind of just locked under this looming threat because our other two opponents, A, aren't very scary and B, aren't doing anything. They're just kind of spinning their wheels, drawing some cards, ramping a little bit. Like they're not doing anything super productive. Also important to note, this uh, exiled the Jupacabra. So if the plan was to get that back, that's no longer an option, which sucks. Uh, now they are going to sacrifice. So they're probably going to kill the braids here, which is, I guess, fine. I, as dumb as it sounds, taking them off the braids so they can't enable the Markov player is probably better for us than it is for the Markov player, but they also might just ping, I don't know, one of us or something. This does trigger the Cordial Vampire yet again. Just going to make these things eight eights now, and if they do kill the braids, they'll be nine nines. We can get up to seven on the Dead of Winter, but we can't, I don't think there's a way we can get to nine. I was even thinking like if we drew a Solemn Simulacrum, maybe we could get to eight, but yeah, this is just so out of reach. So now our outs are kind of Blood on the Snow, which we do have in our deck, which would obviously is just a hard wrath. It solves the issue entirely. And past that, I don't really know. We do have things like Noxious Gear Hulk. I mean, if we could just kill the Cordial Vampire, like the 9-9 with Lifeling and Death Touch is scary, but not game winning. I am afraid that the Cordial Vampire might be game winning though. So if we could just answer that, that's also not so bad because they didn't really do much to develop their board in terms of width this turn. They just kind of went very tall. They have a 5-4 now, but that's fine. Something, again, that can be answered eventually. We can chump block that kind of thing. It's just, we need we need to get rid of the scaling because that's the thing that's going to end up being the nail in the coffin. All right, Braids player does play a Mycosynth Wellspring. Oh, this is the one that searches a land. Gotcha. They cast a Yara. Yep, that doesn't do anything. If anything, that's, all well, again, only better for the Markov player. But um, again, it is nice that we're keeping the initiative. We are going to get to Scry, which is good. I'm trying to think what our path through the Undersea might be at this point. I'm thinking it might be Scry, Goad, and then maybe try and draw a card. Uh, we're going to go to the Lost Well, Scry 2. Okay, we find a land and Secrets. Now, Secrets finds us more cards, but we don't really need that right now. I think we would prefer just to find a land. We can play Mask of Memory, Equip, and cast Grim Hireling, which will get us two more mana. Not sure we'll be able to really use it this turn. The other option is casting Shadow Mage Infiltrator and Grim Hireling, but that seems a little sus. We don't, we, what's funny is we don't really want to attack with Rilsa here. I think we put secrets on the bottom and the land on top. We do want to draw that. And now, now we have kind of a bunch of options and this is where things get a little bit, a little bit tricky. The other issue is they have onboard removal with the Sorin, which means we don't really want to commit these kind of low toughness, kind of dinky creatures. We are going to cast out, or we all are obviously going to play our land for turn. We could commit something like the reconnaissance mission. I don't hate that either. Just try and draw more cards. The issue is we don't really have a good attack. If we attack the Solemn player, they chump block. If we attack, actually the Yara player might buy. I forgot this thing. This doesn't, doesn't have Death Touch, does it? It does not. Okay, so I guess that's an option. The other choice is just to play Shadow Mage Infiltrator and Reconnaissance Mission and pray that they don't ping down the Shadow Mage Infiltrator, which again seems wishful, but maybe our only out at this point. Yeah, I think we actually do kind of just have to cast Shadow Mage Infiltrator and then cast Reconnaissance Mission and pray that in the future, it'll be enough to draw us into enough cards we can find actual answers to this board. And then we kind of just have to sit. It's also awesome. Awkward, I will note that Shadow Mage Infiltrator kind of gets hard blocked by a lot of this, this board state. Obviously, the vampire player has a bunch of black creatures, which means we can't really attack through those. The Solemn blocks the Shadow Mage Infiltrator, and obviously Braids is a mono black deck, so not perfect, but I also don't really think we have much else choice. And I guess if they do spend their turn killing the Shadow Mage Infiltrator, we're not like too terribly sad. Um, it might be the case that if, for example, uh, Elon here casts Ravos, they might ping that down. They might think Amara is threatening him to kill that. Though I don't think that makes much sense. Maybe they even kill the Ayara. I don't know. Um, there are a couple pretty valid targets here for their removal spells. They cast a Dark Hondo of Jamura. This might let them start swinging in at the uh, the Soren player or the Edgar player and swing at Soren. Um, they could probably yeah they can deal four damage to it this turn. That's pretty good. It gets it pretty close to kill range. Maybe they can they can set 
set something up next turn. And this might also, as funny as it sounds, incentivize the Markov player to ping down the Amara just because people get salty on Mitgo and just love doing things in revenge, even if it's not quite correct. But they also might just not attack with the Solemn because it is a better blocker. They might just attack with Amara, which is also probably okay. Um, it would mean if they activate the minus three, it does still die, which is pretty good. Yep. And that looks like what they're going for. I will say uh, it is kind of funny that this thing has done already, I think, six damage to the table. Again, not super significant, but might end up being if they start attacking one person down to a super low life total, especially because we're all kind of creature decks. It does become kind of scary. I mean, yeah, Punisher cards are are frightening when you're low and they definitely have the, the offensive pressure to back it up at this point. So something to keep in note. Also of note, we can't block the first striker with Rilsa. We can chump the uh, the Cordial... We'll chump the Cordial Vampire all day. We'll consider chumping the the, the other 9-9. Nine nine. Uh, but we can't we can't really profitably block the Cemetery Gatekeeper. We're kind of just in this really, really terrible spot. This arch enemy almost game we've got going on. But the issue is uh, it seems some of my opponents are deciding to actively help the arch enemy help the arch enemy which is not uh not ideal let's let's say okay they do just cast edgar which probably means they don't have another vampire in their hand but it also means that they're, they're gonna start buffing up their board which is also not great things are looking pretty rough we desperately need a board wipe i'm not convinced that the ravos sidar player is playing a ton of them i'm i would look towards the braids player to hopefully have a damnation or something but obviously if they don't have it in hand it does us no good and they probably would have cast it already if they did which leaves us and unfortunately obviously we're kind of we're kind of peddling diddly squat here we have the wrath it's just not it's just not big enough yeah yeah they just kind of got out of and then again this is what i was afraid of i mean and it happened kind of even before i really had the chance to really had the opportunity to do it right like i needed to i could have cast it when everything had two toughness but that was so bad right like it made more sense to ramp because it catapulted me too if i drew another land it would have been a uh, plus three on the minus x minus x it's just they grew so quickly that we're kind of screwed so looks like they are continuing their trend of just slamming into the Sadar player. Again, I think they just want them to chump block so they can grow their board. They don't attack with the Gatekeeper, which is kind of weird. I guess they want a blocker, even though they have the most life and they're going to gain more life and they have the biggest board. But sure, uh, whatever, I guess. Maybe they're afraid of me attacking them, but my Shadow Mage Infiltrator gets through anyway. So I don't really understand that. But oh, well, I guess uh, maybe they're scared, scared of a Yara getting in there, right? Yep, as expected, more chump blocks. At this point, it doesn't really matter. They can chump block as much as, as they want. It's it's hard wrath or bust. There's kind of no in between. Or we find something like uh, our own Chupacabra, our own Noxious Gear Hulk, something we could potentially flicker a couple of times to kind of police the board. Uh, the good news is we didn't get attacked, which means we're probably, again, going to keep the initiative, which is a, is good. Again, our, our maybe our out here is just we, we catapult ourselves so far ahead that the Markov player is the one in the dust. I will say they haven't ramped at all, so they're kind of just living off one land a turn, which is good. Uh, it means they're they're less likely to double spell. Again, they cast Edgar this turn, which is pretty good for us. It means they likely don't have a ton going on. Now, I can goad on my turn. The issue is I don't know what I'm supposed to goad. Goading, they're already attacking other people, so it doesn't have a ton of merit, and it's not like we can target anything to attack that gets blocked super profitably. Uh, it's not like anyone else has like a death toucher or something that could potentially answer one of the big threats. So I'm now even thinking we might just go to the stash. It does suck because we won't get the archives then we won't get to go to the archives then and draw an extra card but we, we like i said we kind of already spent last turn establishing card draw so that's not the end of the world like this turn we can probably what we're gonna do at least as of right now is play mask play grim hireling equip mask to shadow mage infiltrator and then probably attack the sidar condo player with real sub because it has death touch and they probably don't want to block with sidar and then we attack the edgar player with shadow mage infiltrator because they can't block it all right they have a vesuva for the cabal coffers with their three swamps so really pop and off over there. I almost wonder if it would have just been better to copy a swamp, but I don't know. I guess it's not that different. I guess it's net even on mana now, right? I am curious as to what they're going to cast here. I guess they could recast Braids. Their Mox Amber is online. Okay, they don't do anything, which is a, just a not great sign. I am thinking we actually are going to go to the stash. I don't think goading anything does does anything productive here. So, all right, we draw Imrith, which is not what we were looking for. So I think we are just going to stick to the game plan here. K2, cast Mask of Memory. The other option we have is to not cast the Grim Hireling and just attack with the Shadow Mage Infiltrator. That might be better, honestly. It leaves us more mana to do things potentially after the fact. Uh, it also draws us, I think, the most amount of cards. I actually think that might make more sense. I think it's not unlikely that we pitch the Imrith here just because, again, it's 
really not doing anything in our hand. We're going to go to combat. And plus that leaves Rilsa up as a blocker to kind of potentially dissuade the Markov player from attacking us with the bigger stuff. We swing in. This is going to let us see a total of four more cards, which like is really good. It's just a question of how good are those four cards, right? Again, we're really looking for like a removal spell here. I think we, we stack it so the Mask of Memory is last. So we um, have the most options to choose what we discard. Draw off Shadow Mage Infiltrator. Mystery Key is more card draw. Not quite what we're looking for. Solemn is not terrible. It keeps us ramping. And then we're going to draw, we are going to draw the two more cards off the Mask of Memory. Now we do find another initiative creature, which is pretty good. It will let us go through the Throne of the Dead 3 next turn. Keyword, next turn. And we are still going to pitch the Inrith, by the way. Uh, we can't kind of finagle it, so we get to go through this turn. It would only put us into the Catacombs, and if someone steals it, we're kind of out of luck. But this would let us take the initiative back as well, without necessarily attacking. Now, if someone does take it from us, we could potentially attack with a Shadow Mage Infiltrator, steal it back, and then cast the Passage Waste here to kind of finish the, the loop. But I think we are just going to end up playing Solemn here. I think we're going to cast Command Tower, or cast, we're going to play Command Tower. We're going to play Solemn Simulacrum. Yep, we're going to lose two off of the Cemetery Gatekeeper. And then I think we're just going to grab a Swamp here. And we are going to cast the Mystery Key just because on the off chance we get to attack again next turn and we, we do find a way to connect. This is a, a basically a one man away to, let's look at three more cards, right? Um, maybe that finds us the answer. And um, we don't want to be... We don't want to leave a mana up here. We want to be as efficient as possible. Back to the Sadar player. Maybe they play Poyan's Wrath of God. I mean, we can hope, right? Um, the other good news is, again, Rilsa is a good blocker, but now the Solemn is too. So if the Markov player attacks us, uh, attacks us with the really big things, we can just jump and draw an extra card. And that is even if they steal the initiative from us, which at this point doesn't really matter. The nice thing is, because most decks can't really abuse the initiative, they can't kind of cycle through it as quickly as we can, per se. Um, even if they take it once and they get a land, not the end of the end of the world, especially when the Markov player is already drawing, you know, 20 million cards every turn off of, uh... <laughs> off of the skull clamps and such. All right, they didn't play a planes. All right, this could mean Wrath of God. Oh, five mana? Oh, it's five. Cleansing Nova? Fumigate, let's go! Let's go! Oh my God, bailed out! <laughs> yeah! All right, not quite what I called, but I ain't complaining, man. I am not complaining. We return Rilsa to the command zone. Oh, we get to draw a card. The Cordial Vampire's gone. And now we're in, so, we're in, so, we're so much safer because even if they cast Edgar again or whatever, and they attack us and they steal the initiative we have a way to get it back like this is so so much better than yeah this is this is so good the other thing is if they cast edgar they're using their whole turn which is again even if it means they take the initiative from us i am totally okay with that and we drew another land for turn oh yeah we're cooking now we are cooking now now we don't get to draw more cards off the things like the mask of memory and the mystery key but uh, that's okay we don't have haste but what i think we can do let me just count our mana real quick one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so we are a little bit short. I was thinking we might be able to cast cast Rilsa and cast the Passageway Seer, which would have allowed us to complete the dungeon even without having the upkeep trigger. But even so, that's okay. If we draw another initiative creature, we still might be able to do it. And even if we don't, like I said, it's not the end of the world. It's possible we don't lose the initiative here. I don't think the Braids player is going to have haste. And the only... Okay, and they play Castle Lock Twain, which means they're not casting Edgar this turn, which would have haste. So unless they have another hasty vampire, which I think they would have just cast last turn, I imagine, if they did, we should we should be able to maintain the initiative and therefore therefore venture all the way through the dungeon next turn. And that's gonna put us super far ahead. I mean that really, that's going to yeah, that's gonna kinda it's gonna kinda really catapult us into the driver's seat. It'll allow us to if we have a board, we can start drawing more cards, etc. 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 They do cast blood ghast, uh, but it doesn't have haste because no opponent has ten or less life. Good thing for us. Um, however, it is really, really good with Skull Clamp. So they are going to draw a bunch of cards, but we kind of anticipated them doing that anyway. They, they're they getting the 1-1. This is just basically the same thing. They just now have a consistent outlet that means they can maintain their the width of their board state without, without sacrificing uh, their ability to draw cards. Okay, and it looks just like more two ones. Now, actually what we can do, and this is sweet, we have Dead of Winter. So if they just like dump their hand and don't, if they Skull Clamp stuff, it gets worse. But if they don't and they just keep casting stuff from their hand, we can just Dead of Winter away their board, and then we can ca uh, cast like Passage Waste here or Rilsa or whatever to retake the initiative, and then we're in really good shape. So like if they, so if they Skull Clamp here, draw two cards and cast another Vampire, um, say like a two mana Vampire or whatever, we're not opposed to just Dead of Winter and then and then yeah, progress our game plan. I think that that would be a really good turn for us. Their their cards in hand would they would have some, but not as many as maybe they would like. If they're down to three cards in hand, I'm pretty I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, so they do just uptick Soar, and that means. Th Oh, they don't? Okay, so this means they're not... They uptick Soren on the Blood Gas, which means they're not intending to Skull Clamp it this turn, which seems incorrect. They're Skull Clamping the 
token. Okay, well now I don't really feel any need to Dead of Winter either. We can just save it for a rainy day when maybe their board does get built up again. That's a weird, that's a weird choice, but who am I to judge? Um, I don't, I can't see their hand, obviously. They're at six cards again, but their board state's basically minimal. Like, we'll have enough blockers that I don't feel a need to wrath them, like I said. We can just save it for, it's a little bit, a little bit stronger. Because now I'm not so afraid of them, their board being so big, we can't Dead of Winter it. Now it should be pretty small for basically the rest of the game, or at least small enough that Dead of Winter will clean up clean up the mess. Now, I am curious as to what the Braids player is going to do here. They did nothing last turn, and they do have a significant amount of mana. The Cabal Coffers are topping, tapping for one extra now, so those produce eight, not counting, you know, the amount to activate it. It looks like they didn't play another Swamp for turn either so yeah they might they may not have one then okay they do just cast braids again that makes sense they're they're gonna sack the wellspring here go find another basic obviously none of us are gonna be able to or at least i'm not going to sacrifice an artifact elon's not gonna be able to okay that's troublesome so now actually we might lose the initiative because they're gonna sack yep they're gonna sack the ugin's nexus to take an extra turn which is again frightening but again but again if their board gets too big we just wrath it and it's fine it's not the end of the world this is still this is still okay it just means we're not using it to kill the markov player or deal with the markov player we're using it to deal with the braids player but it's also possible that again they just kind of draw a million cards here and do nothing else which would also be fine I, i'm not they already are going to have a million cards in hand kind of at all times so them drawing more not the biggest threat i'm more i'm honestly more concerned that they take the initiative from us because that would kind of suck a little bit um it, it wouldn't be the end of the world but certainly not optimal the good news is the nexus exiles itself which means we are not going to be looped here forever it just means they get an extra turn but they didn't even play a land so like they found one but they didn't it, they really were just using that as like play braids and then get to draw an extra card like that was that was kind of it which is fine if, if that's their the way they're using nexus and not they're not using it to literally kill us i can live with that they did discard interesting they did discard sir conrad which is frightening because that card is very good basically a blood artist mills them more cards if they would want to do that maybe if they have a recursion engine so a little a little worrying that they did pitch it but it might just also be that it's too expensive which sounds silly to say considering they have two cabal coffers but you never know crypt cast so now they have just literally more mana than god um this is also probably fine it just dies to wrath so oh well so i imagine they can kind of just cast their hand here um they have eight mana off the swamps and then uh or sorry excuse me uh chibi is it basic swamp or is it just any swamp tap a swamp so they have 10 mana off their swamps plus five more mana off the Cabal Coffers. They cast Unearth here. I'm assuming to get, well, it's the only target. They're going to get back a Yara, which is going to ping us some, but is ultimately fine. Uh, they can't activate it this turn to draw a card. And like I said, I have Dead of Winter. So anything they play here isn't going to stick. And the more they just burn the cards in their hand, obviously they're going to replenish a little bit with the Wellspring at the end of turn. But more they just spin their wheels and cast more stuff I can answer more comfortable i'm feeling ar etbs pings us all for one what does the swamp do <laughs> okay it just pings people for one sure morbid opportunist sure more card draw all good dies to wrath i know i keep saying that but it keeps being true so pretty hard to complain does mean they'll they'll get a they will get a card off our wrath but oh well again they're they're already gonna have a million cards in hand they have eight mana here to work with can uh counting their uh their leech ridden swamp so again i imagine that if they wanted to they can probably just vomit the majority of the rest of their hand we are at 25 which i will say is kind of scary okay sifter of skulls sure again dies <laughs> dies to dead of winter so all good with me they will also get a scion now when i when i wrath them but hey again small price to pay i am okay with that okay and they just activate the leech ridden swamp i do wonder here if they do sack the wellspring whether or not we're supposed to sack the sack an artifact here it is possible because yep they attack us they're going to take the initiative that's fine i am honestly most peeved that we're going down to 20 here but i guess passageway seer does have lifelink so if it lives we're maybe okay they do take the initiative that means they'll get another swamp as i was saying if they do sacrifice the wellspring here i do wonder if we're supposed to sacrifice maybe either the mask of memory or the mystery key or something just to stop us from losing two life and them drawing an extra card but i don't yeah i don't really think so i think it's better to keep our mana and keep our our, our options open, especially when, like I said, we are just wrathing here. And they don't have a blood artist, so it's not like that's going to cost us a, a ton of life. The Michael Synth Wellspring uh, does get them another land when it hits the bin. Okay, and like all things considered, that could have gone way worse. I Like, there, there, there are turns when we die there. Okay, we do draw Fates Reversal, so actually, we can complete the dungeon now, which is super good. Um, We are, I think, just going to start. No nonsense, we are obviously just wrathing here first and foremost. I think it makes no sense not to. Uh, it'll put 
put the blood gas in the bin, but whatever. Um, it kills all of the problematic stuff on the braids player's board. Nothing is a snow permanent, so we don't have to worry about that. Cast deadly rollick. Okay, they're gonna exile the blood gas. I guess they're just doing this because they're just casting this now because they want to get value off of it uh, before they lose their commander. They want to be able to cast it for free. I guess that makes sense. Plus, it means they won't be able to keep skull clamping the blood gas. So again, this works out better for us, I think, than anyone else. They'll get to draw a card. They'll get to make some some. Uh, are they zero ones or are they one ones? Get to make some one ones, but that's fine. Uh, and then of course, uh, Elon will draw a million or uh, gain a million life here. That's okay too. We're not really concerned about people's life totals until it's until it's time to start killing people. So all good. And then we'll have uh, we'll have six mana left over here and then seven once we play our land for turn so i'm i'm thinking what we're gonna do is we're just going to play the passageway seer cast fates reversal get i'm not actually sure what we're getting back yet um it could be imrith it could be solemn it could be shadow mage infiltrator all of them see ki seem kind of okay right now i honestly kind of just want to get the solemn just because it is something for us to sacrifice to the braids player in the future plus eventually it'll get us more land ramp's always good and imrith is slow at the same time imrith does have evasion hits pretty hard draws us some cards maybe that's the move either way we're definitely we're definitely starting off with the passage choice here that part is non-negotiable and we're definitely playing our land for turn then we're going to cast passageway seer so this gets us back the initiative puts us into the catacombs so we get a 4-1 another thing we don't mind sacrificing to the braids player uh braids does cost a million mana I, they still have a million mana but less than they did last turn and then we are going to finish off with fates reversal we're going to target maybe it is solemn okay i'm actually i'm going to take the solemn i might this might come to bite us later Later, but we already have enough card draw that I don't really feel like we need the Imrith. Plus, it's the most expensive thing. Okay, nice. These are really good. So we could either get four cards here, or we could get the Monarchy, or a removal spell, or what I think we're actually going to take, Thassa. Um, and this is because Thassa is going to, doesn't give us a body this turn, but it is going to let us now cycle through the initiative much more easily. Plus, if we draw a removal spell or whatever, now those are all online as well. I think we're going to equip the Mask of memory or do we equip the mystery key probably just the mask for now to the skeleton token just might as well get the value and then yield through our turn end of turn we're gonna flicker the passageway seer so we won't get the counter on the passageway seer which is a little unfortunate but ultimately okay um but now this makes the solemn take way smarter right because now we could potentially flicker this uh funny enough we don't really want to sack the mystery key anymore because it's technically giving us devotion to thassa so yeah we kind of just want to chill i do imagine we're going to get attacked next turn with the scion because they're going to want to take the initiative back. Not that it's going to matter. We'll cast real sword. We'll attack them back. We'll steal it, etc., etc., etc. But we do have to be a little mindful of our life total. We are getting low. And again, I think the passageway seer will be good. It is unfortunate that we're not getting counters on it. But if they do attack us, we can block, gain some life, you know. And now we've kind of we have the, we have all the pieces. Now the only thing we need is just to expand our board and put ourselves in a point where I don't think we can die anymore. Because now I'm kind of concerned about that. Even though we didn't get attacked much this game, like we did take a reasonable chunk of damage from the cemetery gatekeeper. Braids pinged us for two a bunch of times. So we're not completely out of the woods, but we are in a much, much more sturdy position, maybe is the word, um, than we were last turn. That is a flyer, so that can, that can attack us. Um, but Thassa... The, the lesser known use of Thassa can tap down creatures. Uh, so does protect us from big creatures if that does become an issue again. I feel pretty safe from the, the Edgar player this turn. They have a bunch of cards in hand, but they don't really have a great way to attack. And now we might be able to literally race their board there. Okay, minus three Soren puts in. Okay, that one's scary. That that does gain, that does lose us life. Sanctum Seeker, whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses one life. You gain one life. That's uh that's pretty frightening, but they don't have haste. So we're safe for this turn. Uh, and I, I and I guess it's also true, like, Grim Hireling, if we attack, we get the treasures, we can use those to maybe kill it and, and mitigate it a little bit in the future. It's also possible, by the way, that they might use the Scions for mana, as dumb as that sounds. Um, but it might be the case. It might be that they don't really care about attacking. They'd rather just make mana to, to cast their seven cards in hand, because they did refill their grip when they when they used Braids at the end of the last turn. Okay, this might be Edgar. Yep, I'm thinking this is Edgar, which is kind of okay. We probably just chump with the Skeleton uh, and go on our merry way now they would get to ping us for one i guess technically if they do that oh eight mana eight mana is too much for edgar they might be tapping out for the sake of mitko but okay it is just edgar oh wait 
Oh, Edgar cost six. I'm stupid. I thought this card cost. I thought this card was even more broken than it was. I thought it cost five. Okay, they do cast Edgar then. Uh, we're gonna get attacked here, and that's fine. Um, we're gonna block with the skeleton token. Um, it of all things is not the most important on our board, and it's really their only good attack. They can attack into Elon, but they have actually. I guess it would put a counter on itself, so maybe they could attack them. It could attack the Braids player, but they just jump with a Eldrazi Scion, so that doesn't really make sense. And, and admittedly, we are getting at least somewhat scary here. We do have, like I said, our engine is slowly, slowly coming together. Wow, they don't attack at all? Uh, I mean, all right. I am not upset about that. Okay, Soul Ring from the Braids player. Even more mana as if they needed it somehow. Wow, I mean, that's insane. Uh, the, the other cool thing is if we get to keep the initiative on our upkeep got to scry to, which is really good. Uh, or I guess if we steal it back, it's the, kind of the same story, right? Because if we attack, we steal it, and then we'll get to draw the cards anyway. So it works out just about the same, but that's great. I mean, I'm not upset about that at all. Yeah, not getting hit by the 4-4 the four, four haste first strike is uh, cool by me. Okay, Grim Tutor is bad. I don't know what they get here. Probably some kind of blood artist or something of that nature, uh, but that is, that's bad, uh, to put it lightly. That is bad. I am assuming they're finding an answer for the things I'm doing. Now, they don't probably have a ton of enchantment re uh, removal, and they can't really deal with Thassa super easily, given the fact that it's not a creature yet, so they can't exile it. So, I'm a little curious as to what they got. I mean, again, I'm imagining it might be, it might be a Skulk Clamp on their own, honestly. That would draw them a lot of cards, and frankly, that might be what what they're looking for right now just draw a bunch of cards that could be a blood artist though that would also make a lot of sense um just start pinging us down start killing us or i guess more particularly me so priorities here i do think we really need to kill okay they are sacking for mana i did call it they might have gotten a wrath honestly as weird as bad as that sounds they might have gotten a wrath here priorities though i do think we need to kill the braids player first they just have so much mana so much card draw and their threats are not their threats are immediate um the edgar player we get basically a turn cycle before they become really troublesome okay liliana sure so they can make us sack our two creatures but that's kind of fine it also deals with the edgar it also deals with they're gonna draw a million cards here too but it leaves them with one scion to attack us with and steal the initiative back i mean we can just cast real sus so not the end of the world but it does mean we can't attack and steal it and then get another trigger that way this does i mean this does save us again probably from getting attacked by the edgar player next turn and honestly I don't even think we're the threat. I think if anyone's getting attacked, it should be the Braids player. They have just, again, infinite card draw, infinite mana, etc., etc. So they're gonna draw two cards off this. Again, Aelon just gonna continue, continue gaining a million life. And they still, okay, and they, I didn't notice, but they did play Urborg, so now they have, they actually have a gazillion mana to work with, um, even more so than last turn, which maybe that's what they tutored for. Maybe they had the Lily in hand, actually. That could be. I mean, they, I'm guessing they tutored for, oh my god. Uh, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know about Ashes of the Aberrant! No fucking way! Wait, do they not know? Uh, what? is going on okay we get attacked which we expected they take the initiative back but i mean if this was their like master plan this is pretty bad yeah if they tutored for yog will i would laugh so hard okay they scry two off the undercity yep that makes sense don't really need plus one plus one counters on their scion i mean if they have i guess if they have feed the swarm this makes sense but do they just not know they sack to draw a card okay <laughs> <laughs> no way did they really just play into odd board tricks okay a gazillion mana i i given by the length of this pause i don't think they realize that they can't cast it because of ashes no way i bet they're really confused right now i've yet to i'm i keep looking at the chat because i keep waiting for them to, to tell us like hey why can't i cast this spell from my bin yep they they literally asked if it was bugged <laughs> let's go dude Nice, nice Yog will idiot. Oh no. Yeah, so they were gonna use that to like Grim Tutor again and cast it. Oh wait, they sent great <gasps> They sent Braids to the bin because they didn't realize. Do wait, this is oh, they're screwed. Wait, they're like so screwed now. This is fine. We pitched the land, we don't care. But they're so screwed now. Like, right? Actually, do we pitch the land or do we pitch Grim Hireling? We might actually pitch Grim Hireling here. I'm trying to actually count my mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, we do because we want to cast Solemn and the initiative creature. So we actually we actually pitch Grim Hireling here because we want to guarantee it. And Grim Hireling's not super important on this board. Yep. We're going to pitch Grim Hireling here. This doesn't do anything on this board. We have no creatures, so it's not like we can really... Oh, we can attack with Thassa to kill Lily! Oh my god, wait. Okay, never mind. I got... Uh... Oh, wait, we could tap it though. <gasps> 
We can wait. We can play Rilsa. We can tap Junji and swing to kill. Oh my God. Wait, this might be so sweet. If they don't play any more creatures here, we are. Oh my God. We're. This is going to be so sick. Okay. So I have to think a little bit here because I think we have exactly enough mana to do this. Now, look, Lily is not the end of the world right now, but I mean, hell, if we can. Because then we can also goad the Junji so it can't attack us. Yeah, this is so sick. Dungeon Delver, by the way, also very good, but not necessarily right yet. We'll play it next turn. Okay, so we're going to play our land for turn. I'm glad I kept it now. We're going to cast Rilsa. This this, this has the potential of being such a good turn for us. We're going to uh, take the initiative. I'm going to scry here, I think. I think that makes the most sense. Yeah, we don't really need plus one, plus one counters. And we're going to flicker the Rilsa anyway. So, yep, we're going to scry. Uh, ooh, Displace is not bad. Uh, Arcane Signet, obviously a little less good. Uh, we'll keep that on top, I think. Then, activate Thassa, tap Junji. So, they're blocking out of the way and now we begin combat we attack and kill liliana so their their card advantage engine is gone they won't get more tokens etc etc this does get a million power but that's not important we're not really planning on we could we could have, I guess, attacked them to steal the initiative back, but this is so much better because it gets rid of the thing that's actually scary. Lily's petrifying, and we don't want them to have more card advantage than they already do, especially now that they accidentally got rid of their, their own braids. So damage, that dies. Okay, then we're going to go to our end step. Also, the nice thing, Dungeon Delver will replace the mystery key for devotion. We flicker Rilsa, and then we're going to goad the Junji, and then we are kind of cooking. I mean, again, like we don't have a ton of life, but arena, we goad this and then like they're at five cards and really I don't know what they do. They can't attack me back for the initiative. I have a blocker for the Erasta this turn. I, I don't like they would have to have a lot. The Edgar player would have to have a lot of haste creatures to get through. I think we might finally be okay. And and they killed the Sanctum Seeker for us. So we don't even have to worry about that. Like we're not out of the woods, but we are now in a much better position accidentally because of a whole bunch of factors here. Okay, Chalice of Life, you gain, okay. So they're a life gain deck. That's actually kind of cool. Oh, that's a problem. That's a problem. We do have answers to this in our deck, so it's not, we're not just dead. And it, it'll take multiple turns to kill us, which is the merciful part. I mean, five damage or five life is a lot, but we're at 16. So we can technically eat three hits of it. Obviously, you know, the swamp over here is going to change that math and all sorts of stuff, but we're not just immediately dead to it, which was part of my worry. Plus, we're going to draw a million car, a bunch of cards here. And if we ever find something like we're, we're playing Gary in this version of the deck because from the catacombs is not on magic online. So if we draw that, that gains us a bunch of life. If we draw Noxious Gear Hulk, that does the same. Like, and then we can flicker those things with Thassa. Like we have some outs here. We're not just screwed. Time to see what hell the, the Markov player can unleash. The other thing to note, by the way, is Rilsa is going to get plus or, or going to provide plus five power every combat now. So Thassa hits for 14, Rilsa hits for seven. You know, you start adding that up and it gets pretty easy to kill people pretty quickly, especially when eventually we can start using things like the trap and the forge to even more buffer board or deal more damage as we kind of speed run through the Undercity. Oh, that's a good sign. If they're using Castle Locktwain main phase, I am, I think that's a pretty good sign. I am still scared of this Junji because it is going to be attack, able to attack us next turn, assuming it lives, which is not optimal, but okay. Hexmage is fine. They can remove the counters from Thassa, but who cares? That That is not the reason Thassa is good or and or in this deck, uh, believe it or not. Uh, that, I guess, would have killed the Liliana, but obviously we we can't psychically tell that they have it. But it also makes fodder for Skull Clamp, which is probably, honestly, the most important thing here. They're going to probably clamp, I imagine, the 1-1, one, one, draw two more cards. Maybe they don't. Maybe they really just want the board, like, board presence. But yeah, okay. Skull Clamp the token. And now I'm even thinking we might go through the archives to try and dig deeper on our next turn. Because if we find another venture creature and then we get to displace it, holy moly, like, I don't really know how we lose at that point. I feel like we might be able to catapult ourselves, like, way too far ahead. Ends the turn for the Markov player. They choose not to skull clamp the vampire hex mage i guess that makes sense maybe it has some utility eventually and they do have to attack someone who's not us which means they might be open for the crackback if they if their hand is six lands i would laugh very hard i would i would laugh heartily long and heartily because the nice thing is if someone is open we can just swing in and not worry about having to like tap stuff and all kinds of crazy crap also by the way rilsa does give menace so i guess technically um at the very least the markov player is already open for business but um it would mean we could maybe swing in with someone we could swing 
swing in with Rilsa and Thassa as opposed to just one or the other. All right, they do get in for five. All right, now the question is, what else do they have? Obviously not, not braids. Okay, solemn, sure. Ooh, thespian stage. They could have a third Cabal Coffers. Let's go. Or they, I guess they could technically make another one of the Leechridden Swamps to ping us all more. Okay, do activate the thespian stage. Do target Cabal Coffers. That makes the most sense. The other thing too is if we really need to, we can just defensively hold up Thassa, a Thassa ability. I think we are going to go to the archives here. I think we do want to draw a card. This, ooh, offer you can't refer, refuse is very good here. So now we are going to play the Dungeon Delver. That guarantees we have the devotion for Thassa. It also means we'll get the Throne Trigger twice. I think we are going to equip Mystery Key. I don't know if we equip Mask. I don't know if we really need to, and I don't want to waste that much mana. As dumb as it sounds, that one extra could be really important. So I think I am just going to equip Key to Rilsa here, and then we're going to go to combat, and we're going to attack. It's actually possible we want to attack at... That's interesting. Maybe we attack... I actually think we attack Alon because if we get them below... Oh, it doesn't matter at this point. Never mind. I thought... If it if they had less than 10 over, it would work. It doesn't. So actually, I think we focus on killing these two. Yeah, we deal with Alon last, I think, is the actual schmove here. We swing the Thassa at student or the Edgar player. We swing Rilsa at the Braids player. We give uh, Rilsa plus five plus O oh, and menace it blocks. Is this sorcery speed? Oh, only if you control two or more black permanents. OK, well, that answers that. And then we're going to get to draw three extra cards here. So if we find another venture creature, we're really cooking because, yeah, then we can just start we can just start dancing like not even funny at that point so now i'm i'm less concerned about holding up a thassa activation now that we have offer as well it means we're probably less likely to just die and then of course we're also going to get to draw cards assuming they don't block off the reconnaissance mission here no blocks so we get to smack both players get to draw approximately a bazillion cards here and we just one two three four five okay wait one two three four five okay how did how did just double triple check that we weren't gonna lose the thassa uh but we're good we're, we're safe yes i would like to use reconnaissance mission okay a lot of lands which is less than ideal but trigger it's also possible we just don't cast displace yet i mean that's a thing we could do main phase two so how much mana do we have we have five six seven eight nine we could play like solemn hold up the displace and then the counter spell I'm, I'm trying to calculate if we could we i don't think we can get so f i mean it depends on what we hit off throne too that's true as well so yeah i think we're gonna um we're going to play it's talisman right because four five six seven eight yes so we cast talisman of dominance here we're gonna cast solemn simulacrum we're gonna go get another swamp and then i mean i think we just kind of chill end of turn we're gonna flicker the rilsa we're gonna get two throne of the dead three triggers in the wheel mole drifter we don't want displacer beast uh, actually could we swing it so we could displace her we could actually uh we could technically get through the oh no we can't um i think we grab it's either mole drifter or safana here i'm actually interested in mole drifter i think because it blocks the junji and it's too late for the safana trigger so we grab mole drifter which is going to trigger it's going to draw us two cards it's also just going to give us a hexproof five five flyer trigger again grazlax or ghostly pilferer none of these are really great uh i guess ghostly pilferer ghostly pilferer Pilfer can get unblockable, which I think is kind of okay. So we'll grab that. And now we could also just flicker the Mole Drifter with this place too, if we really got desperate. Like we could block the Junji and then flicker. It doesn't have Menace, right? Oh, it does have Menace. Okay. That is important to note. That is important to note. Uh, but we also have a Thassa, uh, Thassa activation up if we if we really need it. So we're in pretty commanding position here. It just We just need to not die. Again, we're at kind of low life total. But yeah, we didn't want to get the Displacer Beast there because we don't want to venture into any dungeon that isn't the Undercity. It's very important we only go through the Undercity. Okay, Suture Priest is bad for us. That's certainly the case, but I think I have to let it go. It also might be that we literally just have to try and attack and kill Elon now, because they're honestly, they're the one who's doing the most damage to us at this point. Sure, Crested Sunmare is fun. All right, not great, but not the end of the world. Um, Suture Priest is obviously a problem, and eventually they'll get a bunch of horses, but we will deal with that when we get to that point. I mean, again, it might just be the case, like we literally just have to hard dig for Noxious Gear Hulk or Gary, which is fine. I mean, that's two outs, and we only have 60 cards in deck. Uh, Throne of the Dead 3 lets us three, see 10 every single time, and they're not targeting us with the life loss, which is probably a mistake, but hey, I'm cool with that too. We don't really want to displace now. I actually probably should have, but maybe not, maybe not. That was definitely a mistake though. They should have targeted me. I'm the threat now. I fully, full admission, I am the threat. Uh, look at me. I am, I am the threat now. I'm actually gonna 
uh, fast forward to the start of the braids players combat i don't imagine the markov player casting a whole bunch of non-creature spells but i guess we'll see it could also be the case that the uh that elon here just really wants to get people dead might be they think they can beat me one-on-one -on -one, and as a result they're kind of willing to just help me sort of fin oh that is bad i should have responded to that god damn it uh uh oh rubber raggy that is bad well now they really need to die shoot uh that was really stupid of me i had the answer i just didn't cast it but we'll see if it comes back to bite me so this is too damn i mean i'm gonna kill them next turn so as long as i don't go so low that i just lose to an one activation of the this thing i'm fine the other thing is if we find resculpt we can just kill it they're the other thing is they're also losing one life every time they make a vampire so like i don't know it it kind of breaks even where like they're killing themselves too i probably do have to tap down junji though because i can't i don't think i can really afford getting attacked even if they might not attack me yeah this is an interesting game this has become a very interesting game the good news is i also aside from having a bunch of card advantage on board i also have a bunch of card advantage in my hand card of course lets us see two more obviously reconnaissance mission and mask of memory do a pretty good job of that and we got a bunch of unblockable guys on board so and i guess if solemn dies somehow that works too i will say the horses will get concerning eventually i probably have enough stuff that i can kind of deal with it but so I actually have 15 damage of just straight up unblock, like flying plus this plus the real set triggers 15. So if they if they only play two more guys, they die. It's also possible that Elon might be willing to give me the assist. As expected, block. They're going to get to draw a card, which I think they're actually kind of thirsty for. I actually think their hand must be pretty bad. I imagine it's it must mostly be lands or something because they've played they played nothing last turn, despite the fact they have more mana than God. Oh, the other thing is the, <laughs> the stupid Leechrin Swamp will also technically, I guess, help get people dead, including myself. But again, we have we might have some outs. I'm trying to remember what the other dungeons do. Do any of them gain you life? Okay. Technically, Lost Mine of Fandelver and Dungeon of the Mad Mage each gain you one life. I don't know if that's going to be enough, but I don't know. Maybe, I mean, obviously we're going through the Undercity, but maybe eventually we could dungeon map and sneak our way through or something in a really crucial moment. We'll see. I am slightly regretting not sacrificing something like the Mask of Memory earlier to the Braids, but say la vie. Oh, all right. We got the scoop from the Edgar player. Evidently, they only had lands in hand, and honestly, I would was going to kill them next turn they are they are dead however this does put us in an interesting position now uh because now it's more likely that the chalice decides to ping me which is bad but like i said if they had six lands in hand and uh i i am going to kill them on my next turn yeah i can't i can't really blame them um not like the game is really that drastically changed from their scooping all right they played another land like i said probably one of the several they have in hand now we're again just kind of waiting to see if they drew anything because so far they have uh they've had zippo action and again without braids now because they punted with the yog will yeah this is a bit bit interesting okay they are tapping mana victimize Ooh, yeah nope that's not gonna be allowed targeting what braids and targeting conrad i think i have to counter this i think if i don't i just lose so i think i think we have to counter the victimize i think i have to eat the the punch off the junji and just pray that i can find enough stuff after the fact to get there well now i feel less stupid for not countering the <laughs> countering the uh uh impact drummers now I feel pretty smart. The other thing that's interesting is because I because I counter it, the way Victimize works is the sacrifice is not an additional cost, which means they aren't going to get a Junji trigger because it's never going to die. Um, now, it does mean, of course, now they'll be able to attack me, which is unfortunate, but I am actually, I, I, I'll be completely honest. Like, I am thinking I might displace now end of turn. It, it sounds bad, but like, I keep looking at this and if I do it, I get the initiative back because they're going to attack me and steal it. And then I get to draw two more cards which gets us again potentially closer to kind of an answer to all of this which is looking more and more kind of necessary as time goes on we'll also be able to stack it so we get two lands out of our deck before we draw two Obviously, the math there isn't like a big difference, but still something. Uh, of note, there are now enough horses that I am kind of concerned. That is a real force. Yeah, so I mean, this is close now. I think it's kind of do or die. I can't block it. It has menace, so I have to take this. And I think it kind of now comes down to an interesting fork in the road. Do I do I displace and try and draw two more cards off the Mull Drifter, Or do I just try and attack and kill the Braids player, draw a bunch of cards that way, and pray I find an answer after the fact? And I, I honestly think it 
might be the case that I have to do the ladder. I think I might actually not displace here because it, it might actually lead to my death. They, yeah, they're going to goad something. I imagine they're going to goad Thassa or something here. Oh, goad Rilsa. Uh, okay, well, now I'm now I'm back to maybe displacing because if I, if I displace it, the goad doesn't happen. Though at the same time, do I really even care? If I swing it in and it dies, I just get to recast it, which is not necessarily a bad thing. The thing that's kind of funny about this deck is like Rilsa almost doesn't matter. So how much damage will I have? 9, 10, 11, plus 10 is 21, plus 5 is 26. So I can heal 26 to Neo. Is that enough? That is the question. Or do I need to displace? I think this is a do or die scenario. I think I'm dead either way if I don't do this. So I literally think, I think I need to do this. It's It sounds so bad, but I actually think if I don't do this, I think I lose the game. This also gives me another initiative trigger on my upkeep, which means I actually, so actually I might be able to kill them because I can go through the trap potential, uh, potentially. We do it this way. We take the initiative first. Do you lose two life? We also have dungeon map. So that gets us one more room further. Also, if we find a removal spell for the one, one, we're also in not bad shape. Okay. Trigger, grab some swamps. We're running out of lands. That's for sure. And then we draw two cards. Okay. Okay, reality shift is good. Reality shift either deals with the suture priest or it deals with the horse, which means if we find like a board wipe, problem solved. Like we're okay. We're, we're now back in business and I think we can be much more aggressive and I think we have to be. The trigger, I actually think we're gonna scry as much as it's tempting to try and kill them. They're not doing anything, so I don't think it actually matters. I think it's better to try and find what we're looking for. Okay, we want neither of those things. Bottom, bottom, trigger again. Feed the swarm. Feed the swarm is another removal spell that kills the suture priest and then we could reality shift the horse it's it's sus but i think i leave that on top i think i bought him the dark ritual <sighs> do i though i think so i think i think it's in mm, but i'm dead anyway no i think i have to oh man this is actually so tough do do i have to i lose life if i cast it and then i'm dead to the thing anyway yep i have to put it on the bottom nope i have to put it on the bottom okay so I think we just have to go to combat here. I think we just have to go to combat. We have to swing everything at Neo. We have to draw a million cards. I think this is our 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 first step. We have to dig. Uh, I guess technically we target Rilsa. Yeah, because if the other thing is if we find blood on the snow, we can reality shift the horse and then blood on the snow. And that also works. Now, we do have to be careful because Junji also pings for two when it dies. Okay, we draw another land. Not what we're looking for. Okay. Four more cards. Oh, I should have equipped Mask. No, I'm so bad. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about it. Okay, counter spell is not it. Baywild gets us through another dungeon. Yes, draw a card. Swamp is not it. Draw another card. Oubliette. Okay, so that maybe deals with the horse. Okay, so we, we I think we get another dig through the dungeon. So I think we have to get rid of the Suture Priest. I don't think that's negotiable. Oh, we can also, okay, first and foremost, sorry, we're gonna chart a course first because that's two more cards. Because if we find, one of the answers here anyway, then it doesn't matter. But and if we find another initiative creature or another venture creature, that also helps. Okay, neither of those really do anything. So what do we have left? We have stash, catacombs, throne of the dead three. So that could give us enough blockers potentially to stay alive. I mean, this is gonna be so tight. Okay. I mean, I think this is what I think this is our only option. Like we have to dig for either Gear Hulk or Gary. I think those are literally our only two choices here. So we start off, reality shift, target. The suture priest because if we do that we're not just dead on board they get another guy that's fine i mean it's not fine but we have to pretend like it's fine exile the suture priest no longer of our concern now i think we have to feywild caretaker here oh but can we even get through the dungeon anymore i don't think we can we have what eight nine ten we have 11 mana so we could do it exactly and i think that's our only out so i think that's what we have to do we cast feywild caretaker this gets oh we have two more mana never mind we were we were okay we were okay never mind never mind so actually do we goad if we goad can we live maybe we have to goad because we never need the mana here right like obviously counter spell is not bad but like we're never going to draw more cards so what are we using the mana for i think that's actually right i think we have to goad to things we're actually gonna go into the arena yeah the more i think about this the more it makes sense we go two of the horses because we might be able to put up enough blockers that we aren't just dead i think that's hopeful but it's possible so we go those two then we play a land for turn it has to be an untapped one we cast dungeon map all right we venture into the dungeon i know actually we never have enough blockers here what am i saying but i think this is the only way we get to go through the throne which is i think our only out at this point i guess 
guess catacombs, right? Drawing never does anything here. So we go catacombs. So trigger, we get a 4-1. And this is also, by the way, why we had to get rid of the suture priest. We go to our end step. Also trigger. We're going to get a 1-1. One, one. Oh, I guess they get another 5-5, five, five, right? Okay. So this is kind of the moment of truth. We have to spin here off the throne of the dead three. I think we literally have to hit gear hulk or we lose. So, okay. We do not hit. Unfortunate. We do hit two more venture things. Now, does that do anything for us? I don't think so. I think we grab sneak. Okay. So we whiffed. We get two more lands, but I guess that technically increases our chances of hitting something we want. Grab an island. Grab a swamp. Sure. Okay. Spin again. Okay, we do hit Gary, but the problem is I don't think we have enough devotion. Oh, but maybe we have enough blockers now. Maybe. Because this is only three, so we go to nine. Oh, I mean, if it is, it's so... It's so close. But I, I think we have to go for Gary. So we go up to... Tw oh, we go up to 12. Why do we go up to 12? Am I missing something? One, two, three... Oh, were we at nine? Okay, never mind. Okay, we might have enough blockers now because two of the horses can't attack us. All right, so we have to go to discard. We're going to pitch a bunch of lands here. Pitch. Uh, that, 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 that. Okay, all right. I, I actually don't know if we're dead. So we can block this, this, and these two. One, two, three, four. And then we have three. One, two. We're actually alive. I actually think we're alive. No way. Wait, is this actually enough? Oh, right, because it's three for each player. That's why we gain. Oh my God, I forgot how Gary works. Okay, okay, okay. I forgot Gary is so broken. I forgot how broken Gary is. We might actually be alive. Oh my God, after all my humming and hawing, I actually think we might be okay. Okay, yep, we lose five. That's fine. We expected that. We go to seven. But now the other thing is Neo dies because two of the horses have to attack them. They have Ravos. They have Ravos. Oh no, we might be dead anyway. I forgot, but I think we live at one. Oh wait, they don't. Ca oh, wait, never mind. They cast the wrong one. Okay, wait, we might be fine. <laughs> After all that, after all that suspense, we might actually be okay. I think we lived at one anyway with Ramos. So this way we take five. Oh, without flying or reach, but we have a creature with flying. Okay. But they only have these. Oh, it's seven. So they might think it's enough, but I have a blocker. I have two blockers. Oh my God, I think we live. They're getting attacked by the horses. They can send the rest at me. Come on, baby. Hit me, baby, one more time. And now if they swing the sun mare, we get to block and kill that too. Yup, spider at me. No way. So we get one turn? We get one turn? We're not dead yet. Let's go. They have the swamp. <gasps> Do they see it? They have to see it though. Oh my God. Oh no, it's not enough. It's because they don't have the Ravos. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. I'm having heart palpitations, man. Okay. Go to blockers. Go to blockers. Holy smokes. I am, I am, I am on, I'm living by the skin of my teeth here. Woo, seat of my pants. Okay, okay, we're alive. We're alive. We're chill. We're calm. We're cool. We're collected, baby. Let's go. Okay, we block those. Then did they did not attack us with Sunmare, but that's fine. We we block. Oh, do we ever let Rilsa die so we can re No, no, no. That's just bad, right? We don't want to do that because we're going to draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, I don't think that makes sense. Okay, I think we kill that. And then I think we, we block a horse. Horse, of course. We chump a horse. Okay, so this blocks this. 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 And we go to... Three? I think we live. And now we can even oubliette away the Siddhar and we'll have more creatures. So now the only thing, and we can flicker Gary. We can flicker Gary. Oh my God. Oh, they get the initiative. Oh, they only get a land. Okay. Holy smokes. I almost had a heart attack. Okay. Whew. So we don't get it on our upkeep, but we can get it when we swing. They gain four life, but I think they already played their land for turn. All right. We only have to deal. 70 damage. How hard can it be? I actually think it's even possible too. Okay, we might have this. We might have this. Now, the real question is, do we oubliette the Crested Sun Mare or do we oubliette the Siddhar Kondo? I don't know if it matters and it'll depend a little on what we draw, I think. All right, they get a, another horse. They get another 1-1. One, one. Uh, do we draw here? I think the answer is no. I don't think it makes sense to do that. We draw a card. Okay, we find Feed the Swarm. Now, Feed the Swarm can only deal with the Ashes, which isn't really all that good. I guess it could kill... Okay, it could kill a horse token too. Okay, so how much damage do we actually have? Now, the question is, do we even attack all out? Because it might just be better to attack with just the things they're gonna get us uh get us cards and we can't flicker gary so i don't think we're just dead maybe we do oubliette the, the sun mare then ah oh, but man if we don't hit we just lose right oh this is so tight so i think 
we're going to attack with Ghostly Pilferer and the Aarakocra Sneak. Because worst case scenario, we can just get rid of the Sidar Kondo. And I think we'll... Oh, and Muldrift. Okay. We are, and we are not going to make the same mistake. We are going to equip the Mask of Memory to the Pilferer to draw two more cards. Because at this point, I think having options is the most powerful thing. Then we are going to activate this. We are going to discard this island. Sure. Can't be blocked this turn. We're going to get to see a bunch more cards. Begin combat. So we can't kill them. I actually don't think we, we can't kill them. We're going to get the initiative back. We're going to get to draw a bunch of cards. Okay. We attack with Sneak. We attack with Muldrifter. We attack with Ghostly Pilferer. And honestly, I actually think that's it. I don't think it makes sense to swing with anything else because I think it's better to maybe have them as blockers. Trigger on Rilsa. We're going to target, I guess, because it doesn't matter. I guess the Muldrifter, who cares? So they're going to take 16 and we're going to get to draw five cards or see five cards. We have to technically pitch one. So we're really only up four, but... And we could even goad the Sunmare to force it to attack too. And we're going to get four scries off of the Lost Will Trigger because of Dungeon and Elver. So we get to get to scry four before we draw any cards too, which is also super important. The other thing is if we find Resculpt, we can also just get rid of the Chalice of Death. Damage, boom, bada bing. All right, we take the initiative. We get to go to the Lost Well. We get to scry four. Okay, we want none of this garbage. Nope. And nope. again, witness protection is pretty good. Okay, so we're going to put island on the bottom and we're going to put protection on top. We draw the protection. So now that can answer the sun mare. Okay, we stack the mask of memory last so we can choose what to discard after we've seen all of our options. We draw. Chalice does nothing. We draw. Demir Signet does nothing. Then we draw two. Chupacabra. Okay, we pitch Bellwar Stone. Sure. So now we don't even need to witness protection. We can just straight up kill the sun mare and it makes our Gary better. Okay, we are going to cast. Ravenous Chupacabra. And we're going to Ravenous Chupacabra, Crested Sunmare. So now, no more horses, no more indestructible. Then we are going to Oubliette, and we're going to target the Sidar Kondo. Then we can increase our devotion by casting Siphana, or we can Dungeon Map. Now, what's better here? Technically, Dungeon Map makes us two mana, so it's kind of free. So actually, I think that's better. So I think we do this because it's basically free. Activate Dungeon Map. Venture into the dungeon. You're going to go to the stash this time. So we're going to make two treasures because of Dungeon Delver. Then we want to hold up Counterspell. Play our land for turn. Sure. Three, we play Safana. This is just another pip of devotion. Then we cast You Want Team Allison. We can hold up Counterspell and we're going to flicker the Gray Merchant at our end of turn. So now we don't just die to the Chalice. Okay, we go to 11. So now we're effectively at six. We get another 1-1. One, one. We get three more treasures. And now they have to have something pretty special because we have Counterspell backup and a gazillion blockers. In fact, we have almost one block for each of their creatures. Popping a lot of mana here. Is this just Ravos? No, it can't be Ravos. Too much mana. Darien, King of Kildor. Darien is fine. We can witness protection the Darien. I guess they can make themselves... Technically, they could target themselves with the Chalice to deal themselves for five and make five one ones, but that would be really bad. I don't think that's what they're going to do, but I don't feel any need to counter that. It doesn't immediately kill us. And honestly, at this point, we are saving resources for things that can immediately kill us. Yep. Target us. That's fine. Now, the question is, do they swing out? Because if they do, I think that's bad, actually, for them. But they might do it. They might just feel like they have to. Try one. Sure. Sack off the one one. This guarantees they get another one. That makes sense. All right. They do just swing out. So I think our plan is chump block the big stuff, kill all the little stuff. So we go to blocks. Obviously, Thassa in front of a horse. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I think we're going to put Solemn in front of a horse. Okay, and they scoop. They know that this is over. They know they can't win. And after a two-hour game, we finally, on a mold of five, we finally emerge victorious at six life. Let's fucking go, dude. Yes!